University of Aix Marseille, and she will talk about the prefix palindromic length of uh, K automatic sequences. Thank you. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, so, this is a work, a joint work with Jarko Piltomeki, uh, who has been a speaker on this seminar, and my former master student, Enzo Laborde, who found the most uh, interesting part, which is just programming. And uh, it seems to me that here, the most interesting part of this talk is not the results, these are just usual results, but uh, the conjectures, which show something a little bit strange about a reasonable function of co-automatic words. So, uh, I should start with the very beginning with the definition of the palindromic lens. The palindromic lens is just the minimal number of palindromes needed to express a finite word. So if I take a finite word, by chance it is just a prefix of the two word, I can decompose it to palindromes like this or like this, but I cannot decompose it to two palindromes. So it's palindromic lens is equal to three and not less. And the prefix palindromic lens of an infinite word is the sequence, which is the palindromic lens of prefixes of lens n of this word. So of course we can consider palindromic lens of every factor and sometimes it is reasonable to do it, but in many cases it is just easier to consider one sequence uh, which depends only on n and we take a prefix of a word. So what is, for, for example, if you take this word, which is suspicious to be the two Morse word, uh, then uh, the prefix palindromic lens starts like this. And we see that it, it is growing for, for the lens 10, it is already four, but it's, it is not clear how it behaves. So in general, we know very little about this function. Uh, of course, for, for periodic words, it is not so complicated. For periodic words, it can be bounded like here. The, the prefix palindromic lens is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, it can be unbounded like here in this word, ABC, ABC, ABC. There are no non-trivial palindromes, so it can be just equal to N. It's the maxim maximal possible growth. And uh, if words are not periodic, uh, this conjecture, which is already seven years old, uh, eight, yes, it is eight years old because it, it, it was formulated before the public official publication, uh, is that if a word is not ultimately periodic, then the prefix palindromic lens is not bounded. Uh, so we know something about this function. In particular, in the very first paper, we proved that it is unbounded if a word avoids some power, avoids some long repetitions of the same word. And the proof, uh, we, we, what, what was unexpected is that the proof is not constructive. Uh, we just use the fact that if somewhere in the word there are two palindromes which start at the same point and whose lengths are close to each other, like here. If it is the case, then it should be a repetition here. It is something like a long power. So the palindromes cannot be too much close to each other. The ends must be exponentially far. So the number of palindromes is logarithmical and it's enough to say that somewhere there must be an infinite number of them. Otherwise, we cannot cover everything with palindromes. So it's just a rough idea of the proof. I, I just say it to say that it is the proof is very short and uh, a bit unexpected. So what else do you know? It is also true for all morphic words, all, all non-periodic morphic words, I mean, which follows from the same paper plus the result of Claude and Starosta. Uh, the greedy version of the conjecture is also true. 
uh, I mean, if we always take the longest palindrome, it is another function and or even different functions. It depends on the side uh, from which we start. Uh, but anyway, it, it, it happens to be uh, a much simpler problem, even if not trivial at all. But uh, the greedy versions are known. And uh, maybe the last more or less global advance on this conjecture is that it is true for all Sturmian words, including Sturmian words which are not k power free. And it is funny that the proof for the for Sturmian words is at least two different proofs. One of them is general for k power free words, and it works for the k power free case. And the other one is uh, completely different and works only for the case when the powers are not bounded. It is unusual that for the same object, we really need two different proofs. And in fact, uh, in some sense, the conjecture is proven for uh, almost all infinite words. The only remaining case is when we have long powers and then some longer powers of another level and then some longer powers of, of another level and many, many, uh, an unbounded number of layers like this. Uh, like for example, in the Sturmian word, which are not K power free, it is exactly the case when it happens. And for that proof, we need some non-trivial consideration of the Ostrovsky enumeration system. So probably, well, the only way I can see to prove the conjecture is to consider some very bulky, very nasty enumeration systems. And I just feel that I do not have enough memory capacity to uh, to describe it. Because even for Sturmian words, it, it was not completely trivial. And in, in the general case, I'm more, I more or less understand how to prove it, but I cannot do it. And this is the only case of the conjecture. But this was just an introductory part because the general conjecture, uh, well, there is some progress and it continues. And now uh, a simpler problem, a problem which, which seems to be simpler is that what exactly happens for known examples of words? Just what if you take the Toymor's word, what if you take the Fibonacci word and so on? So uh, in general, uh, it is much easier to find the decomposition to palindromes than to prove that, that a decomposition does not exist. So it's easier to get some upper bounds uh, for uh, the palindromic lens than lower bounds. For upper bounds, well, there are some results. Sorry, I mentioned this even, even though the proof was never really published. Uh, it's just an abstract. The proof was published here. It has some logar logarithmic upper bound. And for lower bounds, uh, very little is known. I, I just know two results. One of them is mine. Uh, it is on some very specific triplets words. Uh, and OK, the growth is also logarithmic. I mean, the growth of the supremum is logarithmic. Uh, and the only result which was there before, uh, the only precise result on the prefix pal palindromic lens was on the two Morse word. It was uh, proven last year nearly simultaneously by me and by Shu Li, who is here, I guess. Uh, and it is a precise function of the prefix palindromic lens of the two Morse word. Attention here, I define the two Morse word as a fixed point of the square of the usual morphism. So we just, I prefer it because here the images are palindromes. It's much nicer. And uh, so we immediately see that the prefix of lens four is a palindrome. Then we apply amorphism another time and we have the prefix of lens 
16, which is also a palindrome and so on. So if we draw the graph, if we draw the plot, we have, we see immediately that it is the prefix palindromic length is equal to one at every power of four. And then there is some growth, which is very slow, but probably the supremum is growing. So the result, the main result on the prefix palindromic length of the tumor's world can be formulated like this. You see it is just a recurrence functions uh, for the length of something like 4n. Everything can be described in terms of uh, the length n or m n plus one. So it's a recurrence formula. Uh, and uh, well, it was discovered nearly at the same time by two people. And uh, what I really like in this formula is that the plot, which you have seen, the plot itself is a fixed point of a morphism. Uh, so if in the plot we have a growth, the prefix palindromic lens is growing by one, then next time we uh, replace it by this. If it was e equality, then it will be like this and then like this. So uh, this graph itself is a fixed point of some morphism of lens four. And if we look what exactly we depict, it will be the first differences of the prefix palindromic lens. They can be equal to only to minus one, zero or one and uh, nothing more. It's, that is true for every uh, infinite word. And for the tumor's word, it's a nice picture like this. And everything is well described by this morphism. And in particular, we see that the supremum uh, grows logarithmically somehow. So basically, if we take a four times, a 16 times longer prefix, uh, then the maximum uh, grows by three. We add three to the maximum when we take a 16 times longer prefix. So, of course, it is a nice and very small result. And uh, the, it seemed a good idea to generalize it somehow. And in particular, the obvious question was, OK, the two immersed world is two automatic and four automatic, and it is the same. Uh, what can we say something nice about all uh, automatic words and the prefix palindromic lens. Uh, we got to that the, the prefix palindromic lens here is too regular and four regular. Uh, and its first differences are automatic. They, they are just fixed point of some morphism of lens four. Uh, so the idea was can we generalize this nice result? Can we do everything uh, for any other k automatic world? Uh, it was a reasonable question. And I made something rather stupid. I just took the period Dublin word and I tried to obtain something similar by hand. I spent several weeks and I got basically nothing. Uh, so and now I understand why. So now I feel a little bit guilty for those who do not know well the definition of the automatic words and of regular sequences. Uh, I just give formal definitions. And uh, if you have any questions, just ask. So a word is k automatic if every symbol of it can be obtained from the k representation of n with a deterministic finite automaton with output. Uh, this is the main definition. Uh, an equivalent definition is that a word is k automatic if and only if we have some k uniform morphism, its fixed point, and then another uniform morphism psi 
such that our view is the psi image of the fixed point of phi. Uh, attention here, normally psi can be taken to be a coding, a, morph, a uniform morphism of lens one. Uh, here we do not need this condition. We, we need, sometimes we need phi, psi to be longer. It is all equivalent anyway. And a third uh, equivalent condition, a third equivalent definition is that the set of arithmetic progressions with difference, which is a power of K and starting from the first uh, K to the power E symbols, starting from the very beginning or before the second term of the first progression, uh, something like this, this kernel is must be finite. So for example, for the two Morse word, the kernel contains only two elements, the two Morse word and the inverse of it when we exchange A and Bs. Uh, so sorry, I understand that it was uh, not clear if you do not know these definitions. Uh, it, it is two chapters of this book to explain all the equivalences and to give all the examples. And yet another chapter for the definition of regular, regular sequences, uh, which I give here. And I am not really going to use it. Uh, what, but what I need, first of all, I know that for many nice functions, uh, this fun uh, many nice functions of k-automatic words are k-regular. And why I say nice, uh, it's because uh, it means the, that uh, Charlie Rampersat and Charlotte and many other people know how to compute them. Uh, and even to compute them automatically uh, with the, the Walnut software. Uh, and uh, basically every question about many functions of automatic words became now more or less automatic. I, I mean, it can be solved by some standard uh, tools, including some software. So for example, the complexity function, the number of different factors of lens n, the number of different palindromes of lens n, and so on. Uh, many, many functions are can be described in some arithmetic terms. Once again, I, 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 I am afraid I cannot uh, well explain <laughs> uh, the, the conditions, they're quite technical. Uh, but anyway, uh, for many functions, everything is simple. For our function, it seems that it is not. So this method, this very powerful method doesn't work for this function. Uh, the situation looks much more complicated than we, I could predict a couple of years ago, even for the period Dublin word. I mean, it was for the tumors word, it was just a result of reasonable complexity. For the period Dublin word, I tried to understand something and I failed. And uh, the only thing which is better in you know, all the situation is that we do not really need the definition of a regular word, a, regu a regular sequence, sorry, because in fact, uh, the prefix palindromic length is k regular if and only if its first differences are k automatic. So, for, for example, the first differences of the two of the prefix palindromic length of the two immersed word are fixed points of this morphism. Or equivalently, we can write them like this, or equivalently, we could say 1, 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, and so on. I just, the, there are at least two alphabets which are better than the original alphabet minus 1, 0, 1. Like that, like that. Uh, of course, I, 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 I have never mentioned before that uh, for every infinite word u, the first differences of the prefix palindromic lens 
can only be equal to minus one, zero, or plus one. It's a particular case of a lemma first published by Sarela, which I hope here. Uh, so why, why is it true? Because if you had a factor of length n, uh, and we should pass to a factor of length n plus one, uh, then we, in the worst case, we can add the last palindrome, which is one letter. So this will give the maximal possible uh, first difference equal to one. And on the other hand, if you had a word of length n plus one, we can erase the last letter and the last palindrome in the worst case, it will become two palindromes, which is the middle and the first letter. So this is an extreme case from the other side. So there are, there are only three possible values. This is true for every infinite word. And so uh, a sequence is k-regular, if and only if its first differences are k-regular and a k-regular sequence, which takes only a finite number of values is k-automatic. So in fact, we should only check if the first differences of the prefix palindromic lengths are k-automatic. It's just more convenient to work immediately with the first differences of the prefix palindromic lengths and not with the function itself. Because everything will be automatic, automatic words are nice. So the main theorem we managed to prove is the following. If a co-automatic world contains a finite number of distinct palindromes, then the first differences of the prefix palindromic lens are k-automatic. So everything is nice as for the two Morse world. But only if, well, not only, because in the two Morse world, the, there is an infinite number of distinct palindromes, but the theorem works only if the number of distinct palindromes is finite, which means exactly that there is there are some longest possible palindromes and nothing more. The length of the longest palindrome is bounded. So this is the theorem. And if we uh, speak on results, which I'm, which I'm presenting, this is the main result. Uh, but maybe not the most interesting part of what we got. So uh, the idea of the proof of the theorem is more or less straightforward. If you have an a finite number of palindromes, then there is a length, the, 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 the length of a longest possible palindrome. And then the prefix palindromic length of N is just the minimum of the prefix palindromic length of some length which is not much less than n. The maximum possible difference is p. So there are basically p, possi p possibilities uh, how we could compute the prefix palindromic length. We, we just should look at the p previous values and the word, the factor of u, which is in between. So it is a finite number of cases to consider, p cases to consider uh, for every next factor of length uh, p. Uh, and so it is, we can construct a finite transducer, which works with the uh, prefix palindromic lens and just computes everything what, what we need because there is no nasty cases when, for example, uh, we got a very long palindrome appeared from somewhere which was which was which could not be seen before, so everything is of bounded length. Everything is bounded, and 
so we use a transducer, we apply it to a chaotomatic word. And by a theorem by Kopham, which is not the most famous theorem by Kopham, but it is still a, a theorem from one of the two very important papers, uh, what we get is also a chaotomatic word. Uh, of course, a transducer works with the uh, first differences of the prefix palindromic lens. So this is just an idea of a proof. And since we construct a transducer, which you on the on, on a chaotomatic word, what we get is huge. It's a hyper exponential bound for the size of the object we got. It is still chaotomatic, but it is huge. And the proof here does not contain a good uh, construction for any reasonable result. So if we need a, a construction for some other results, uh, this proof does not help immediately. But anyway, we obtained something nevertheless. So maybe, sorry, the first uh, word to be considered, the first two automatic word to be considered after the two immersed word is probably the period Dublin word. The third one is the paper folding word, which is just a fixed point of this morphism to which we apply another morph morphism according so A and B become zero and C and D become one. So it's a famous example of a two automatic word. And we got a precise formula for its, prefix, for its first differences of the prefix palindromic lens. And the formula is, that, well, one slide is not enough to get it. So I, 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 I am showing you the second part. So it's a morphism of lens 64. Uh, I wrote it like this because it is important that there is the same word in between at the, always at the same position. So it is a morphism of lens 64 applied to a fixed point of another morphism, which looks like the original morphism on the alphabet A, B, C, D. The only difference is that, in fact, we are interested in couples of letters. For example, this is B, which follows A. Or this is C, which is after B. So in fact, the, uh, the, let the new letters are couples of previous letters. So we take the fixed point of this morphism. We apply this morphism and we get the prefix palindromic lens. Uh, well, the, the first differences of the prefix palindromic lens of uh, the paper folding bird. Uh, unfortunately, it is not so easy to draw it like for the two immersed word because the longest palindrome in the paper folding bird is of lens 13. So the function of the prefix palindromic lens will be growing asymptotically. It will be. It will not be uh, too close to the horizontal line. So instead of drawing, I can just show you this. And of course, we used uh, programming to find it. And of course, it then it required some uh, proof. Uh, why it is like this. Uh, and it is important that in every long block like this, there is the same word of lens, which is just a bit greater than the lens of the longest palindrome. So this, this was a result on the paper folding word. We also managed to do the same for the Rudin Shapiro word, which is similar, which is a relative of the paper folding word. Uh, it's another morphism, but the same coding. Uh, the longest palindromes are of lens 14. And the result uh, we get here, 
yet another theorem which requires two slides is of the same nature. Once again, a morphism of length 64 applied to some morphism of length two. And in fact, here, these are also pairs of letters from the original alphabet, but this time we have one more symmetry. And for example, B means two couples of uh, consecutive letters, which are symmetric. So anyway, it, the structure is clear uh, and we understood it. So these are two results which do not follow from the general theorem. Well, the existence is uh, follows from the general theorem, but not the uh, view, the precise morphisms. So these are not direct corollaries of the general theorem. Also, uh, these are more or less the same nature of the results than for the tumorous word, even though the tumorous word does contain an infinite number of palindromes. Uh, so it was a happy coincidence that everything is fine for the tumorous word too. Or at least I don't know why it is so nice. And also, in fact, Enzo Laborde uh, found a morphism which describes the prefix palindromic lens of the Sierpinski word. Uh, it is the fixed point of this. And he found the morphism which describes the first differences of the prefix palindromic lens. Uh, I am sure that it works, but strictly speaking, we do not have a proof of it. And uh, we do not have, uh, well, maybe it could be a beginning of another paper uh, if somebody proves it and maybe manages to work with yet another family of morphisms, which will be nice. Because now I am passing to the most uh, unexpected part of this talk, to the conjectures. Uh, which were not predicted at all. And in fact, I, I, I hardly believe that it is like that. So let us consider the period Dublin word, which is just the fixed point of this. It is uh, a very nice morphic word, a very nice, uh, how to say it, two automatic word uh, from the class P. So it is a common palindrome followed by different palindromes every image is, every image of letter. So it is full of, it, it, it contains many palindromes. Uh, in particular, the prefix of lens, uh, I guess two to the power n minus one is always a palindrome, a prefix of lens one, of lens three, of lens seven, and so on. It is always a palindrome. Uh, so clearly the infimum of the prefix palindromic lens is equal to one. And for the uh, supremum, there are uh, upper and lower bounds and they both are logarithmic. Uh, so there is no doubt that uh, it is something of more or less predictable growth. But on the other hand, it, I'm nearly sure that the prefix palindromic lens is not too regular. And thus its first differences are not too automatic. So let us consider the two kernel of this word. The two kernel is just the set of arithmetic progressions uh, the, of arithmetic subsequences with the difference a power of two and starting more or less from the beginning. So the first uh, letter is numbered between zero and the, the considered power of two. So if a word is k-automatic, is two automatic this time, then its two kernel must be finite. It is one of the equivalent definitions of 
the uh, two automatic worlds. But, uh, well, here is a table. My co-authors and me, we all computed something like this independently, just to be sure that it is not a mistake. Uh, so if you take a prefix of length, a power of four of the period Dublin word, and we count the number of elements of the two kernel, which are already observed in this prefix, which are for sure different. Of course, these are finite sequences, but uh, if they are different, they are already different. We see that the number grow, grows, it continue, continues to grow, and the growth is almost exponential. I mean, it seems that if there is a limit of this ratio, it does not look to be equal to one. So it seems that the number of elements of the kernel in the first differences of the prefix palindromic length of the period Dublin word, it seems that it is infinite. Or at least if it is finite, then it becomes, it stabilizes, it stabilizes very, very late. So late that nobody could uh, count it. Just to compare, uh, for the paper folding word, if I'm not mistaken, there are 68 elements of this kernel. For the Rudin Shapiro word, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, there are 78 elements of this kernel. And here we have thousands of them. And it seems that we have an infinite number of them. And as far as I know, nobody knows what to do with it. So it is the strangest part of the stroke. And uh, well, there was a moment when I wanted to understand everything by computing something by hand. For sure, it is not possible. And it is not clear how you could well describe this sequence. We only see that it is much stranger than we could guess. And also, uh, I have considered uh, chaotomatic words, but uh, after some papers, I'll cite one of them here. Uh, we know that nearly the same technique normally works with words which are not chaotomatic, but rely on more complicated numeration systems. And the simplest case of this more complicated uh, type is the Fibonacci word, uh, which is the fixed point of this simple morphism and which is related to the Fibonacci numeration system. And it is, we can generalize all the notions to this Fibonacci numeration systems and to ask the same questions about functions of this word in terms of the Fibonacci numeration system. In particular, we can define the, K uh, the Fibonacci kernel and so on. And it seems that the Fibonacci kernel of the first differences of the prefix palindromic lines of the Fibonacci word is also infinite. And this is very strange because, you know, the Fibonacci word was, I guess, the very first word for which somebody, I guess it was Michelangelo Bucci and uh, Luca Zamboni, they tried to compute the prefix palindromic lens first for the Fibonacci word. They found that it is probably unbounded. Well, it was proven, proven that it is unbounded because the Fibonacci word avoids four powers. But at the moment, nobody can really compute, give a formula for the uh, prefix palindromic length of the Fibonacci word. And it seems that 
the formula will be very complicated or maybe there is just no nice description at all. And this is unexpected because you know, normally people start uh, considering a new function with sequences which look easy. And here by chance, even for, for some easy and classical example, <laughs> it is not easy at all. So maybe the main result of this talk is not the theorem and not the theorems for two given examples, uh, the paper folding world and the Rudin Shapiro world, but some conjectures. It seems that the prefix palindromic lens of the period Dublin world is not too regular. And for the Fibonacci world, it is not Fibonacci regular. And which means automatically that there exist some chaotomatic words for which it is not K regular. And I'm, I do not know, I, I know that the, there are many experts here and now, and maybe you could give me an example of some another function of which is not K regular for some K automatic word, but at least I do not know such an example. Well, <laughs> in fact, I do not know this example too because it is not proven. <laughs> But I just hope it, that it could be the first example of such a function. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um, does anyone have uh, any questions for Anna? Uh, I have a question, if I may. Uh, let me just, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you you mentioned uh, this what you call the Sierpinski wood, yes. and you say that the difference, the first difference, is generated by some morphism, but you don't have a proof of that. Yes. Uh, what kind of morphism do you have? It is uh, yet another time. It is just something like a three uh, uniform morphism mm -hmm. on over uh, ten letters, and then a nine uniform morphism on these nine letters, uh, of these ten, 10 letters. Uh, okay. So it's, so. these are two morphisms. Uh -huh. One, three, three uh, uniform and the other nine uniform. The second. I see. Okay. okay, thank you. Any other questions? Just one um, small remark is it seems like the the difficulty arises because you're doing the min of many things. And this is something that doesn't tend to preserve K regularity in general. And, yes. um, but it also suggests it might be really hard to, to, to find a counterexample. Yes, yeah, so if, if something exists, we can we can uh, find it like for the two more sphere and other examples. But if there is no uh, nice description, how could we prove that there, that there is no nice description? Uh, I, I seem to remember that in the paper by Shu Li, uh, there is no min in the formula he, he obtains finally. Am I right? Uh, it should be. It is the the minimal no, number. Yes. He has something about 4k plus 1 according to k mode 4 or something like ah, this. Ah, yes, yes, yes. In, 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 yes, in, in this sense, maybe, because it is, uh, anyway, it depends on uh, the values of n and of n plus 1. And for sure, there are some other ways to describe the same. Great, great. So, I mean, in this particular case, it might be, it might be the case that there is no min ultimately. I mean, there's a formula without means, so, so that uh, Jeff is probably right when saying that the, uh, the occurrence of mean makes things difficult, but in some cases, it may happen that the mean just disappears because you have an, a different formulation. Yeah. Yes, so for example, for the period Dublin world, uh, well, the, pro the problem is that I can give a reasonable decomposition into palindromes. I just cannot prove that there is no better, de better decomposition. 
-hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> okay. So if you if, if you need to consider an infinite number of transistors, <laughs> it becomes unclear. Right. Uh, so uh, uh, Gabriela has a question. Yes. Uh, in the chat. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I, Hi, Anna. Thank you for a nice talk. Um, my question is um, probably naive. Uh, so it seems that the behavior of the PPL function on the Fibonacci word is not uh, easy to describe or yes. there is no mean of having a formula for it. But what if you consider only the prefixes of the Fibonacci word that are Fibonacci numbers. Do you have, uh, do you observe a regular behavior or is the same mess? Uh, it's a good question. I, I should look at my old drafts on that. It's at least I have a conjecture because, well, well, it's, it, it, I guess it's easy because uh, the Fibonacci number minus two is the length of a palindrome, which is a central. Oh, length. right, right. So it's always the, uh, I think three. It's always three. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yes. It was a naive question, actually. So the, if you restrict your attention to a particular length of prefixes, then you have a more understandable behavior. So it's the general function that is not easy to describe. Yes. Okay. Um, sorry, I, I think it's actually two, not three, because the uh, prefixes of the Fibonacci word of length of Fibonacci number are standard words, which are known to be uh, product. Yeah, of product two of two palindromes. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, does anyone else have a question? I have a question. Yes. Uh, so my question is: so you've you've studied this function for the uh, some automatic sequences, and uh, you said also for the Fibonacci sequence. Yes. Have you studied it for um, a substitution which has no embedded numeration system? Well, I guess there is always an embedded numeration system. So it's some, sometimes it is just nasty. I, I mean, for, for yeah. this point. Um. Okay, I was thinking more dynamically. I was thinking of substitutions which don't have a maximal equicontinuous factor. Okay, and so for, I don't know this definition. Um, ex but okay, so for example, is no. <laughs> okay, so how about the Chacon substitution? Ah, I see. Well, we, we did not try. And it is not clear. Well, even, even if it is, if it can be complicated for simple forms, it can be even more complicated for more complicated forms, I guess. But I don't know. Well, it, it could be it, it could be interesting to, to, to see. Okay, thanks. Uh, by the way, Shirley confirms that uh, in his formula there is no minimum. Okay, yeah, Shirley has his uh, hand up. Do, do you want to say something? Okay, maybe not, but uh, does anyone else have a, have any question? Yes, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Julia? Um, have you tried to take the problem the other way around? Uh, start from a ternary sequence and uh, try to find a word for which this is the difference of the prefix by Henry Klein. <laughs> no. So there, there are probably some conditions, but uh, I think it could be possible to establish a list of conditions that such a sequence must satisfy and then try to construct. Yes, it, 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 it is an interesting, uh, it, 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 it is an interesting idea. No, I, we didn't try. Okay. Uh, sorry, Shirley says that he has a problem with the microphone. So if you have a question, just, just write it, I will read. So no, Juliana, yes, I agree that it could be a funny 
question. Mm -hmm. What are the conditions on the, on the sequence? So for instance, start from uh, some automatic sequence uh, that would give some logarithmic growth for the, for the sum. Mm -hmm. Well, basically- There's some obstruction. Okay, some cases, some things are obvious. So the sequence of all pluses is possible for ABC, ABC, ABC. Anyway, the sum is uh, always- At least one. At least one. And for the, what, what happens in the middle? It can be non-trivial. Yes, I agree. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone else? Uh, if not, uh, I'll just uh, say thank you to Anna again.